All right, hello everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's call. We're so happy you're here. This is the ESRD Learning and Action Network Series focusing on home modality, quality improvement activity. Um, hi, this is Stephanie Hall and I'll be your host for today. Uh, I've got a couple reminders that I want to go over before we get into day, today's presentation. First, we're streaming this audio um, over the uh, computer. The audio for this event is available via internet streaming. No telephone line is required. Uh, troubleshooting echoes. Echoes are usually caused by multiple connections to a single event. So close all but one of your browser tabs. Uh, this event is being recorded and all the material will be available from your network representative within 10 business days. Uh, we do, uh, in order to reduce background noise, all the phones are on mute, but we do want to hear from you. So uh, during the presentation today, please submit any questions or comments via the ask a question uh, box. And our phone lines, we have very limited dial-in numbers. Uh, if you absolutely cannot uh, stream this conference by via your computer, please request a dial-in a dial-in line via the ask a question box. Also for troubleshooting any audio today, if your audio from the computer speakers are breaking up or if the audio suddenly stops, click the refresh button located on the top kind of left-hand side of your uh, toolbar on your computer or hit the F5 key at the top row of your keyboard. When submitting questions today, uh, for some of you who have been on these QIA lands in the, pre in the past, we have used a different system that was called ReadyTalk. We have migrated to what we all call now Global Meet. So some of the features might look a little different today. So I want to go over that with you, and I also want to go over the CEU process has changed too. I'll go over it here in a minute, and I'll go over it again at the end of this presentation. But the, uh, some, for submitting questions now during this <clears throat> presentation, you'll you find the uh, Ask a Question section located on the left-hand side of your screen. It looks similar to the screenshot you have up there now. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the CEU process is different also. So you will want to stay on till the end of the presentation and at that time there will be a slide that you will be able to click on the link to obtain the survey and then it will take you to your CEUs or option two will be if you that around approximately 15 minutes after the conclusion of this presentation you will automatically get an email with the survey monkey link and then after the, you complete the survey you will be taken to the CEU uh, links that will then allow you to get those CEUs. I will go over again that at the end of the presentation. So the reasons for the participation in today's LAN, we're going to learn about the function and resources of the National Patient and Family Engagement Affinity Group, some of the ways to spread the best practices from today's call. We'll be you're going to listen and share your approaches and experiences via the chat. You're going to identify how shared information could be used at your facility. And then you're going to apply hopefully at least one idea, idea from today's land call at your facility. And we ask that you're going to identify and implement one action item from this meeting that can directly increase the number of patients choosing a home modality in your facility. Um, I also want to share with everybody uh, the pre-work questions that were sent out. Thank you for everybody who took the time to do those pre-work questions. Uh, there were two. And the first question was, are you aware of the role of the ESRD NCC National Patient and Family Engagement Learning and Action Network? So 442 people responded to that and 60% said yes, they do know what the NPFE LAN role is, and almost 40% said no, they did not. The second question was, have you ever used a resource created by the ESRD NCC NPFE LAN? Uh, again, 442 people responded, 33% said yes, they've used the resource, and uh, almost 67 said no, they have not. So we have two presenters today. 
I'm going to introduce them first, and then I'll turn them over the slide to them. Uh, first one is Kim Bettner. She is the Associate Director of Patient and Family Engagement for the ESRD NCC. Ms. Bettner leads patient and family engagement efforts by collaborating with ESRD networks and community stakeholders through person-centered partnership and with renal patients and their family members. We also have Renita Peck. She's a subject patient expert with the Home Dialysis Affinity Group. She's helped develop the test, uh, the Let's Talk Home Dialysis Conversation Cards. Ms. Peck also has volunteered with the National Patient and Family Engagement for the last two years. So I am going to uh, go ahead and turn the presentation over to uh, Kim. Kim? Thank you, Stephanie. Welcome, everyone. The National Patient and Family Engagement Learning and Action Network team thanks you for allowing us to kick off the QIA LAN year of calls to talk about promoting home dialysis with patient-centered resources and talking to you about the role of the NPFE LAN. So let's go ahead and get started with the next slide. So here's a look at what we will do on today's call. We are going to discuss the definition of a LAN, explain how affinity groups support the LAN, share the vision and goals for the LAN and affinity groups, review home dialysis affinity group developed resources, and then uh, most importantly, hear from a home dialysis affinity group patient subject matter expert, which we will refer to as a SME or SME. Next slide. For those of you who are on the WebEx, this is the MPFE LAN team. I am Kim Bittner and Jerome Bailey is my partner. Our CMS NPFE LAN subject matter expert is Jaquincia Polk. And with CMS's direction and support, Jerome and I work with patients and caregivers from the 18 ESRD networks to develop resources to enhance the quality of care of patients across the country. Next slide. Here are some of the NPFE land SMEs with whom we work and partner. And Stephanie, if you want, you can kind of um, clip through some of these. As you'll see, uh, this is a very diverse group of individuals and they come from different social, economical, and educational backgrounds. And the SMEs uh, serve a two-year term and then are able to transition to become legacy SMEs. We transition the SMEs off the land to allow new patients and new ideas to come into our work. The MPFE LAN is a group of patients, caregivers, and healthcare professionals who work together to make healthcare better for kidney patients. There are more than 90 SMEs nominated to be a part of the MPFE LAN. They represent the 18 ESRD networks, which cover all 50 states and U.S. territories, such as the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and Guam. All treatment modalities are a part of the LAN. So what is the goal of the LAN? LANs value the knowledge that members bring to the group and use the information and ideas shared by members to make improvements quickly through small changes. These small, quick improvements can add up to make a big difference in the lives of kidney patients. The patients and family members that are part of the MPFE LAN develop resources to help support the network quality improvement activities. The MPFE LAN shares best practices and supports the spread and resources to ESRD networks, dialysis facilities, transplant centers, and renal community advocacy groups. Next slide. As part of the work of the LAN, we work to identify QIA resources, adapt resources for patient and caregiver use, share resources with ESRD networks and community partners, request networks to share the resources with their facilities, ask our SMEs to share resources at their facilities, discover partnerships uh, within the kidney community stakeholders, and then spread the resources through collaboration, social media, and website postings. Next slide. 
The CMS ESRD network program has four broad goals. They are to empower patients to make decisions about their health care, usher in a new era, a era of state flexibility and local leadership, support innovative approaches to improve quality, accessibility, and affordability, improve the CMS customer experience. All the ESRD networks work on QIAs that work on QIA that address these broad goals. All the QIAs need to incorporate the patient and family member ideas. We count on patients and family members to share their ideas within the LAN. Next slide. So within the LAN, there are smaller groups, and we call these affinity groups. These groups work collaboratively to promote communication, choice, and respect. They build on the group's individual and collective strengths. They encourage patient and caregiver SMEs to share their valuable perspectives and ideas in order to improve the quality of care for all ESRD patients. And they also promote an all-teach and all-learn environment to develop resources and materials. Then these resources are ultimately put into action and shared beyond the land itself. Next slide. This year, the MPFE LAN, in conjunction with the ESRD networks, is supporting three areas of focus for CMS. Reducing bloodstream infections, increasing the number of dialysis patients dialyzing at home, and increasing the number of patients receiving transplants. There is also a patient-selected topic affinity group uh, that we had in 2000 and, um, 2019. This affinity group chose to work on helping patients and caregivers improve their emotional well-being. We will be working with the patient-selected topic group uh, this year in order to determine its focus as well. Next slide. All right, we have our first polling question. So I will send that out to everybody. Um, what do patients cite as being the reason for not wanting to do home dialysis? So we will uh, give some time for everybody to answer that question. And there's got quite a few coming in. Um, We'll just give it a few more seconds before I close out the poll, and I will close that out in three, two, and one, and I'll send those out. So, what do patients cite as being the reason for not wanting to do home dialysis? Uh, about 48% said no care partner. Almost 36% said no space for dialysis supplies. And 13% uh, said fear of needles. And about 7% said that there were fear of bleeding. So thank you everybody for participating in that. And Kim, can you see the next slide? I can. Okay. So for this call, we're focusing on the work of the Home Dialysis Affinity Group. And through many discussions and sharing of personal experiences, the Home Dialysis Affinity Group talked about the importance of having conversations about home dialysis options in order to learn what matters to patients and how it impacts their overall quality of life. The group identified that one of the main obstacles to engaging patients in home treatment modality education is that discussions often consist of staff asking the question, are you interested in home dialysis? If the patient response is no, the conversation sometimes ends and is documented in the plan of care as educated, not interested. Affinity group SMEs reported that many patients say no 
when asked because they have not been educated about home dialysis and therefore cannot imagine themselves in that treatment setting. Next slide. Uh -huh. Polling question polling two. Question, yeah, polling question number two already. So let me put that out there and send it out to the audience. Polling question number two, what resources do you use to teach your patients about home dialysis? So we'll give everybody a, a little bit of time to answer that. And we're getting in quite a few responses now. So we will wait a few more seconds and all right, I'm going to close out the survey to everybody. And uh, what resources do you use to teach your patients about home dialysis? About 18% said handouts and flyers. 7% uh, said patient-to-patient -patient interactions. Only barely 1% said uh, refer to resources on the internet. And 74% said a combination of those resources. So good to know. And thank you, everybody, for taking time to answer that polling question. And I'll give that back to Kim. OK. So on the previous slide, um, we were talking about um, some of the, the barriers that the, the patients were identifying. So now, um, to address this barrier, the affinity group developed conversation starter cards that they titled, Let's Talk Home Dialysis, to help uh, patients and caregivers initiate and maintain dialogue about home dialysis treatment options. Within this um, deck of cards, there are five categories, which include quality of life, family, flexibility, travel, and diet. Each category has four questions to help spark the conversation. The questions were based on what was vital to the subject matter experts as they considered home dialysis as a treatment option. Sample questions to get the um, conversation started include, what do you already know about home dialysis? How do you fit your dialysis schedule in with your family, work, volunteer, or school needs? How does your fluid allowance affect you daily? Where would you like to travel? Is there anything stopping you? Instructions for use, tips from patients, and web links as well as phone numbers to additional resources are also provided in this deck of cards. Knowing that the cards may be used at home or in an environment away from the healthcare team, the subject matter experts also created the discussion notes resource, which you see on the slide there, to record answers or thoughts to the questions asked on the conversation cards. Patients are encouraged to share their answers um, that they record on the discussion notes with members of their healthcare team. After the Let's Talk Home Dialysis cards were created, the subject matter experts shared this resource with their facilities, doctor's offices, support groups, and kidney community. They shared the cards with patients and members of their healthcare team. The, the cards were used to start conversations with patients at the clinic in the lobby and while they were on dialysis for those who wanted to participate in that type of conversation. Some of the SMEs were also invited to share and talk about the cards during staff meetings. Can we have the um, next slide, please? I would now like to introduce Renita Peck. Renita is from ESRD Network 9 and was one of the members of the Home Dialysis Affinity Group, and she currently uses peritoneal dialysis. She's going to share her personal experience with creating and sharing these resources. Renita? Thank you, Kim. Um, 
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we uh, on the um, Home Dialysis Affinity Group felt like there would be it would be helpful if we created um, some type of uh, resource to have conversations because oftentimes um, patients don't know what they don't know, so they don't know what to ask. And many times the staff in the center, particularly um, on the hemo side, don't know what to talk about and don't have a good grasp of um, the home dialysis options and, and how they might fit into their, um, into their patients' lives. So, we felt like um, it would be nice just to have something um, that people can touch, feel, see, um, and read so that they can have a more informed choices. Now, um, one of the things that um, I have learned about, I, I've used the conversation cards um, in, well, I've shared them with our social worker in my center um, so that they can have an opportunity to either provide them um, to patients or they themselves spark conversation with patients. Um, and I also was able to um, provide the resource or, or an overview of the resource in an in-service for in-center dialysis techs that um, our market had for about, I think there's about 70 or so techs in the room. Um, and I was um, discussing the option of home, um, home, the home dialysis, um, particularly peritoneal. And I introduced the conversation card. And I really got a good feedback from the, the text saying that they thought that that would be a good way for them to be able to speak to the home dialysis options. So um, I think that our uh, resource is um, helpful. Um, I've gotten good feedback from it. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to, we haven't had a lobby day since we introduced these cards, so I haven't had an opportunity to use it there. But um, I have uh, spoken to um, a couple of patients and just one-on-one, -on -one, and the the knowledge that I have gained from actually helping to create the cards has been helpful and valuable to be able to speak peer-to-peer -peer, um, with other patients regarding their home modality options. Um, that's kind of all I have. Um, Kim, I didn't know if you had any questions for me or no, thank you for um, sharing that, Renita, and um, your experience with um, creating the resource. Um, would you mind sharing just a little information about when you uh, were invited to share the conversation cards kind of as part of the in-service with the dialysis technicians and any feedback that you received um, when you um, provided that in-service? Um, so it it was an in service um, solely to introduce the um, dialysis text to home dialysis, and um, I, on behalf of PD patients, spoke. Um, there was another patient that spoke um, who was on home hemo, um, so. Um, so I was able to share my experience um, with 
home dialysis, my home hemo, I'm sorry, home PD experience, um, I was also in, in center um, hemo. So I've had both experiences. Um, but the response that I got from uh, several of the technicians were um, that they they would really like to use those to be able to speak to because they don't know and they um, as we have in the in service the plea was for the technicians to help identify patients who might be good candidates for um, home dialysis and their hesitancy, of course, is they don't know enough about it. But the response that I got from several um, was from several folks were that they had um, they thought that this would give them enough um, to start with to understand the basics, so that they could help identify um, additional patients for home dialysis. Thank you for that additional information, Renita. We appreciate that. No problem. If anybody has any questions for Renita or Kim, please submit them through the question and answer uh, box. Kim, was there anything else you'd like to share? Um, I did notice on the um, chat box we received a few comments of people inquiring um, about where to find these resources. Um, and Stephanie, I believe that when we send out um, um, the, your email, well, there's the resource there. And then also um, we can include that email or the, um, the web link on the email that we follow up, is that possible as well? Yeah, so what we can do is when we send out all the, we'll send out the slide deck and all the uh, material to the networks, which will be in turn sending them out to the facilities, we can include any of these links that uh, Renita and Kim were talking about. Uh, there was also a lot of questions, Kim, about the conversation cards, where can they find those? So those two, uh, right, will be found on that link, the same link? Yes, all right? those um, yeah. all those are together, yes. So we have, so, what yeah. we've done on the MPFE LAN uh, website is there are instructions on how to use these cards. So we don't just send you to the cards, but we do provide instructions on how to um, use them and how to print them as well. Um, so that information is on the website. Um, for you to, to make it a little bit easier. Perfect. Um, so let me uh, go. I, we, there were some questions that came in, and please continue to submit your questions. Let me just see. There was, uh, I think, Kim, there was a couple. Are you sending these things out to us? Yes, we'll be getting those out to you, the conversation cards and the, any, any of the links. Uh, I, I'm not. I'll. I will ask this question. I'm not sure if Kim and Renita knows that. Um, it was a question that came in: Is if a patient prefers to have a care partner, is there any incentive for partner? Kim or Renita, do you care to answer that, or do you know that if there is, I? Can you repeat that, please? Sure. If a patient prefers to have a care partner, is there any incentive for the partner? Well, Bernina, I don't know if you would want to answer that just from your own perspective. Um, are they, I don't know if whoever submitted that, if they're looking for incentive, like is it um, personal incentive as far as the individual not having to go to the, you know, a, a dialysis facility three times a week um, and just providing that assistance um, that way, or are they looking for an actual paid care partner? I'm, I'm not. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm sure not if I understand the full question. 
Yeah. So I'm guessing, um, and if that's that's a uh, Evelyn, if Evelyn you want to clarify that, so for us, uh, I guessing it might be a financial incentive. And if that's it, uh, we really don't know. I we really can't answer that. I don't think that's within our. Um, I don't. Well, scope. I've never heard of one, but right. Uh, any monetary or any incentive like that, um, I, you know, usually it's just a, you know, spouse, family member that steps up and, you know, um, and depending on, like for PD, I don't need a care partner. So, um, I mean, my husband is, is, you know, assist in setting up supplies and things sometime. But other than that, I do everything. I hook up myself. I, you know, it, it doesn't require a care partner. Now, home hemo is, is different and there's different, there's different schools of thought on care partners with hemo now. I, I don't, I can't speak to that. I'm, I'm, I can't give any medical advice. So, right. Yeah. All right. Um, I have a question for you. Are the cards and resources available in Spanish? That is not something that they're available um, currently, but it is something that um, uh, is being investigated. Um, I saw that question come in as well, and I believe that individual says they have a um, high um, yes. Spanish speaking. Um, population, so we um, have received that request. So it's something that's being um, investigated. Okay. So thank you for submitting that. Thank you for submitting that request. And uh, I have a question here. Would you just, again, reiterate what does SME stand for? That stands for Subject Matter Expert. Thank you. And that term yeah. is thrown around loosely with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Renita is a subject matter expert. We couldn't have done this without Renita or any of our um, subject matter experts that partner with us. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Renita, I think this is for you. It says, what do you think is the, or both of you, what do you think the best way is to motivate, motivate patients to choose home HD? Uh, You know, um, I uh, I don't I can I know one thing is that it, with home PD I do it every night. With home HD you don't have to do it every day. Um, so it's still in the kind of the same you know depending on the prescription could be three four five days a week but not every day and not you know. Um, it could be shorter times than in if there's more days a week, but shorter times than in center. Um, it kind of it, it varies based on the per person's prescription. However, um, uh, you know that's the difference that I can see. That um, you know you have that option of doing um, less days a week if you're choosing. Home P, home hemo over home PD. Does that make sense? Great, thank you. Um, got another question here for sort of for both of you again. I think um, all in center staff were educated last year. They did lobby days for treatment options were completed as well. We also had a dinner for all the staff with a patient setting up the machine so that the staff could see how easy it is. Um, any other suggestions? It sounds like they're asking for um, providing education to patients about um, home dialysis and the options. Right. Any other ideas for this uh, facility that you could help them with suggestions to just improve their home referrals? Renita, do you have any from your perspective? Uh, well, I mean, I don't, other than um, 
having identified specific um, patients that a home patient can talk to um, one on one. I know that was helpful um, to several patients that I've talked to. Um, so that one on one support or peer to peer um, education might be another step. It sounds like the other um, things are, are great, but identifying patients, um, particular patients that you feel like would be good candidates for um, home. And then pair, pairing them up with, um, are you recommending, Renita, pairing them up with um, a mentor so they can uh, connect yeah. that way? Yeah. Yeah, you know, a home patient that can talk them through the process, tell them how it is for them and things of that nature to and answer their questions. Okay. Right. Renita, you. did you did you do like um a, a, a pre class or um you know, to have your your um questions answered or um as you were considering home dialysis, would something of that nature been helpful? Yes, I did do a class um, that talked about all the modalities. Um, however, my situation was a little different. Um, when I um, was first um, advised that I would have to be going to dialysis, probably going dialysis, um, I, I took the class then, I got my fistula, and at that point um, I did not have to go in to, I didn't have to start right away. So it was actually a couple years. So a lot of that I, um, a, a lot of that information I had kind of lost, but um, I knew I wanted to go into to the, to home dialysis initially. However, um, our situation, my husband and I's situation, such that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good fit. So I had to go in center when our situation, uh, our living situation, I'll, I'll put it that way, got um, uh, changed. Um, I was able to make the transition to home, but I did take a class, um, which was helpful. However, I wish um, the one thing that I why I stressed peer to peer or a mentor or some being able to speak with an actual patient, a home patient, is because I wish I would have been able to speak with an actual patient um, prior to starting home because there are a lot of little nuances that I, I didn't really know um, that I wish I would have known before. Great. Thank, Thank you, Renita. Helpful. Yeah. Um, Renita, there's a question for you. It says, Renita, did you know after the in-service that you provided, was there an increase of patients referred or started home? Um, now that question, unfortunately, I cannot answer. Um, I know um, uh, because there are several, I mean, there were quite a few different um, centers and um, home therapy centers represented in our in our market, so um, I'll, I'd have to go back to the my home therapies um, center to see if we had an increase. Okay, good. Well, let's. Um, we got a few more questions about the cards, so maybe more for Kim here. Uh, Kim, is there an advantage to using Let's Talk? cards over the My Choice, My Dialysis tool. We use that tool online, which is interactive. So, That's a great question, and um, that was something that was discussed when these cards were um, developed by the subject matter experts, and that is one of the resources um, that's offered on one of the cards. So no, these are not to be used in place of that resource because that is an incredible resource. Um, these are actually um, almost, the, the thought process was to be used prior to that. Um, this is almost just to get um, patients and their family members um, 
thinking and talking about it and thinking about um, some of the things that are in, important to them and then directing them to use that interactive online um, tool that's created by um, um, Medical Education Institute. So um, these can be used uh, almost in conjunction, but not to replace um, that online tool, not at all. Okay, great. Um, Kim, how many cards are there in this resource? There are a total of 20 cards. Um, so there's uh, 20 question cards. There's five categories, four questions in each category, and then each introductory category has a little explanation along with um, tips from other patients. Um, so all in all, the deck itself um, has about, I think it's um, no more than 28, I think it's 26 cards. And, um, you know, but it's not that you have to go through every card. Um, the, the subject matter experts that created this did not want it that, you know, you had there was an assignment that you had to go through every card. It was more, you know, th these were the questions that um, were important to them. When they started, they actually, Renita, remind me, we had close to 30 questions that they identified that were important, and then they um, narrowed them down um, as to the, the top for each category. Um, and the, it was more like uh, they suggest to answer one question from each category. Again, just to get the conversation started. And that's why um, it was recommended to create the um, discussion notes um, a tool as well so they could jot down their ideas, their thoughts, and then take it to a member of their healthcare team and just start that, that conversation. Great. Um, this is, I think, for Renita. It says the idea of talking to the technicians is great. <clears throat> what time would it be appropriate to approach them? Um, in terms of education, uh, right? Um, wow. Um, I, you know that that would probably be a question best left for the center managers. Like, what time if they could do like an in service? Like, they had a whole dinner. I mean, they invited them to to a big dinner, and um, you know, so you had a captive audience. But um, I mean, it could be like lunch and learns um, that you know might be appropriate as well. You know, maybe have them come in, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes, doesn't have to be a whole long time before their shift or what have you, and provide, you know, information, have some snacks or something, something to incentivize them. Oh, good, food. <laughs> food always seems to work. That's why I just keep going there. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, like lunch and learns, uh, something before their shift, um, but it, it does have, I feel like um, it does have to be something that's ongoing. It can't just be one time and then you, you know, forget about talking about it. It, it does have to be something that, you know, um, as with any training or uh, any knowledge base that you're, you're trying to, to, to get across to, um, folks, employees, what have you, that it, you know, it's better if it is more, more on a more consistent basis, just kind of, you know, providing little snippets of information, you know, not too much, but just <clears throat> those types of things. Like I said, 15, 20 minutes doesn't have to be whole long hours and hours of, inform of um, classes and meetings. Right. Thank you. Um, got a couple more here. We've got yeah, we've got a few few more minutes. So let's um, kind of get through some of these. Um, this is a comment that from uh, Hillary, and she just says that she we do bring patients to all the lobby days, and it does help. So thank you, Hillary, for sharing that um, with us. Uh, Kim, a quick question here: Are the cards 
paper or are they a hard plastic? It's whatever. Um, they are available electronically, so they are available through the um, uh, ESRD NCC website. So if you are printing them, it's what you choose to print them on. Um, it's recommended to print them on a heavier cardstock paper, but um, if the facility wants to print them on some type of plastic so that they can be um, 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 sanitized, then um, you know that's the facility's decision. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so, Renita. Um, could you please share what additional information you would have liked to receive prior to starting PD? Um, the space requirement for the supplies. Um, so, um, luckily, we have an you know an, a spare bedroom that we could utilize for you know the supplies. Um, but I know that some some people don't have that. However, um, there are other options in terms of delivery options, I believe. I, don't quote me on this. I've just learned this through um, conversations with other folks from across the country, that there are other uh, delivery options, like, you know, instead of a month, uh, every couple weeks or something like that, like I said, don't quote me on that, but um, but yeah, that that was probably the big thing um, that and the 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 space requirement for the supplies and the amount of trash <laughs> because all of those boxes, well, you empty them out and yeah, what do you do with them? So um, again, luckily we have a system. <laughs> that, you know, break down the boxes and we have a school around the corner with a recycle bin that we just take them in, you know, every couple weeks or however much, <laughs> however lazy I get to <laughs> let them build up. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, those are the probably the top two things. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, another question for you, Renita. Uh, this is this, uh, several patients we've talked to are fearful of being responsible for their own treatments. What can I tell them from a patient's perspective, from your perspective? Well, I would say um, it's not as hard as you think it is. Um, I can, I can say, I, I, you know, I'm pretty astute. Um, I'm in the healthcare field. I'm not a clinician, but I, you know, I understand the responsibilities of, you know, uh, that we have in the healthcare field, and um, it it can be daunting. And it was when I first did my training, I, it was overwhelming, I must say, but. It's like second hand now, and um, I feel like I I prefer to be responsible <laughs> for my own, uh, you know, treatments. Um, I'll give you an example. I I did want a little break um, from doing, you know, the work every day because it's I'm on a cycler every night. And it does get a little daunting. So I'm going to take a break and go back in center, I said to myself, um, for a few weeks because I, you know, still have a working fistula and everything. Well, I <laughs> went in for a few uh, sessions, and they didn't pull enough off of me, and I ended up being in the hospital for fluid overload. Uh, so I'm right back to taking care of myself and doing what I need to do to do my to do my own treatments and it's just fine with me. I don't need a break. But um it can be overwhelming. Um but I prefer 
being respond. I mean, it is it is a daunting task, and some people just want to go three times a week and sit there and let somebody do the work, and um, and you know that's fine for them. But for me, I, I work full time. I have activities that I participate in outside of work. Um, I can travel. I'm flying out next week. All I need to do is have my supplies shipped. I'll do my treatments there while I'm, you know, there. I fly, you know. Um, so I like that flexibility. I like to be able to eat potatoes and not have to worry about my potassium. I like to be able to drink water and not have to worry about oh, I can't drink too much because I know that I'm just going to dialyze tonight um, and every night. So it's just a matter of what is, like I said, these cards spark that. What's important to you? Um, so I hope that wasn't too long-winded of an answer, but. <laughs> no, that was very good. Thank you for, for your input here. Um, let me just I, let me just probably do get one more question here uh, before maybe we close up. Um, so just again for probably Renita, um, any tips on generating interest in home? So many of our patients that we approach about home are almost horrified. They say, "No way, I could never do that." What's the best way to? presented in a positive light. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think that people, you know, I, I tell people you'd be surprised what you're willing or able to do. Um, I, I am just all, I am one that feels like it's important that we be an advocate for our own health and our own health care. And um, I think the positive about, you know, well, people are afraid, and there, there's a lot of myths. And unfortunately, those myths have taken over, you know, sometimes, you know, oh, your area, you know, your house has to be sterile, or where you have to be. No, it just has to be clean. There are sterile parts of the process, but you have to maintain infection control, but it doesn't have to be sterile. You know, um, you can't have animals. You can't have um, plants or no, you can have animals that just can't be in the room when you are connecting or disconnecting or doing, you know, you know those types of things that that may be, you know, approaching it in that manner. So, well, what have you heard, you know, about home dialysis that makes you fearful, and try to approach it in that manner. So that when some of those myths come out, we can um, provide the actual realities. Uh, I think that might be a positive way to help people um, <clears throat> get, you know, uh, get better acquainted with the home modalities. Perfect. Thank you. Well, it is about five minutes till the hour, and I think. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead. There was a, thank you, uh, Renita and Kim, for being here today, for taking time out of your day to present uh, on this subject, very important subject. We do have a lot. We did have a lot of questions come in. Unfortunately, we just can't get to all of them. But uh, again, I just want to you know repeat that all these materials will be sent out to you. Uh, Kim will send me the links to the website so that you can have access to the cards and. Um, this information that was presented today. <clears throat> I'll get those out to your networks uh, in 10 business days. Uh, if you don't get it, make sure you uh, contact your network. Um, I just want to kind of wrap up the call today and go over the CEU process again. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, if your facility has a promising practice related to increasing patients choosing homes, we want to hear from you. Please submit your uh, interest into to the NCC info 
mailbox and we will contact you. We really, this is how we get our speakers is from facilities that have done some really good things out there who have some really best demonstrated practices they want to share. So we're always interested in hearing from that from you all. Uh, you can always follow us on social media for updates on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. And I'm sure the most important thing that everybody wants to know is, again, our process for getting CEUs has changed this year. Uh, so if you've been on these lands previously, you know that normally right after this event closes, you'll get a pop-up. But uh, going forward, right now, you can click on that link to the Survey Monkey. Uh, you can uh, complete that Survey Monkey and submit it. And then if you need CEUs, you will then get a pop-up for the CEU information. Also, um, as a sort of a backup, in about 15 minutes at the close of this call, you will also receive a email that will have the link to this survey monkey. Again, please fill out your survey. We want to hear from you. And then if you need CEUs, there'll be the opportunity at the end of that survey to um, log on to our Learning Management Center and get your CEUs. So I'm going to leave that up just for a few minutes, but I am going to close out the call. Again, thank everybody for taking time out of their busy days to join us on our very first 2020 home land. Uh, and thank you for our presenters again. Uh, thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of your day.